A thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Modern life can be a mundane existence. We are safe and prosperous, but we can also feel stuck. Stuck in our little routines, our office jobs, our relationships, but most of all stuck with ourselves. Our limitations and fears, our inability to live freely in this tightly structured society, and often our inability to truly change ourselves, to live up to what we know we can truly be. I have watched all of my colleagues and friends surpass me in every way imaginable and within 18 months I will be dead. Now the recent Joker movie once again proved how fascinated we are with anti-heroes, villains, those outside the bounds of morality, and although to suggest that such a movie could be blamed for inspiring any real life violence as the boundary between film fantasy and reality is vast. It is interesting to look at how these dark characters resonate with and explore our own psychology. Now, an often used psychological concept to understand this fascination with villains, uh, how these characters reflect our own dark side, is the concept of the shadow self by Carl Jung. Uh, I myself have utilized this concept to analyze Mindhunter, and Thomas also touched upon it in his Dark Knight analysis. So I thought it would be interesting to explore a different psychological concept to treat character studies, the concept of legacism. And your gut is hungry for chaos, to watch society break down and find out what's truly important. Lacticism is the paradoxical desire to be struck by disaster, to go back into primordial chaos, to witness the end of the world. I prayed for a crash or a mid-air collision. Anything. Now of course, to explore this, it would be logical to look at our fascination with huge disaster movies, but I think that a character study of three protagonists serves as a more interesting individual approach to such a psychological concept. By looking at Fight Club, Breaking Bad and The Joker, we can see how three characters are thrown into chaos and disaster and what they find in it. All these characters are stuck within society, within themselves. The urge for chaos and disaster then is a craving for freedom. Now look at Walter in Breaking Bad, he finds disaster in his cancer diagnosis. You understood what I've just said to you? Yes. Lung cancer. Inoperable. Now, as we know, he decides to cook crystal meth in order to make money to leave for his family. $737,000, that's what I need. That is what I need. But of course, he goes far beyond this goal. And what we truly see is a man that was trapped, breaking free and breaking bad, finding power, danger, excitement and freedom to the disaster of his cancer diagnosis. <laughs> From the very moment Walter gets his diagnosis, he starts finding freedom, control and power. His death sentence becomes his liberation as he acknowledges himself. I liked it. I was good at it. And I was alive. Now of course it turns out that his death sentence doesn't give him the freedom to do anything since he still has a lot to lose. His family has a lot to lose. <coughs> but through the seasons he increasingly gives up these attachments to friendship and family. I won. One could argue not completely, but through his path into chaos he increasingly chooses power and freedom over safety, security and family. Jesse, you asked me if I was in the meth business or the money business. Neither. I'm in the empire business. But it is not only his cancer diagnosis that can be used to explore the concept of lacticism. In a world of constant distraction and worrying about the past, the future and all our little troubles, to be forced to focus only on survival, only on what is right in front of us, is actually freeing. I have spent my whole life scared. Do you know what? Ever since my diagnosis, I sleep just fine.
There is a simplicity in chaos where you are forced to focus on the only thing right in front of you and you become purely focused. Run. The narrator of the original video about lacassism by the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows remarks also that an aspect of lacassism is the feeling that it only takes a push for our fragile society to fall apart. Here we go. I would say that this aspect of lacassism is what in a way defines the Joker. At the underbelly of a fragile but structured society, the Joker only finds anxiety, fear and pain. All I have are negative thoughts. But once he starts introducing chaos and disaster, he finds freedom and power. I just did what I do best. I took your little plan and I turned it on itself. Look what I did to this city with a few drums of gas and a couple of bullets. His mission then becomes to prove to others that chaos and anarchy only takes a push. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order and everything becomes chaos. Now for disaster to be involuntarily thrown upon you and have it change you is one thing, but in Fight Club the narrator purposely introduces it into his own life. Fight Club was of course released in 1999, which was a time of economic prosperity, stability and security. Now as a lot of movies released in this year, Fight Club explores the search for radical change during prosperity and stability. The middle children of history man, no purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. As was also pointed out by the YouTube channel Now You See It. Fight Club takes this opportunity for introspection and turns it into a conversation about manhood. A world without conflict means a world where men don't have a way to assert their own masculinity. So the characters go to great lengths to manufacture conflict and chaos to satisfy their masculine impulses. Prosperity and stability does seem to create boredom and a feeling of being trapped, and throwing ourselves into chaos and disaster frees us. Why have a nice and organized apartment and a stable corporate job when you can blow it all up, move into a wreck of a house, fight each other every weekend and blow up credit card companies? All in order to feel alive, free and in the moment. When the fight was over, nothing was solved, but nothing mattered. Cool. Afterwards we all felt saved. Now, although the characters I've discussed go down a dark path, I don't believe lacassism is necessarily a path towards evil. Something that is incredibly hard for all people is personality change. We're looking for a way to change your life. You could not do this on your own. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. Because yes, in fact, we are creatures of stability and safety. This makes it hard to change our personalities and bad habits. And as Academy of Ideas points out, radical personality change is actually something that occurs often after a descent into chaos. Rapid personality transformations do not occur very often to those content with life but instead are more likely to occur to those who have reached the darkest pits of despair. The paradoxical idea of a desire for chaos and disaster is thus explained by the desire of radical personality change. I said fuck you and your eyebrows! If we are unable to change ourselves through the discipline of changing our own actions, it becomes tempting to wish for chaos to force us to change. Because yes, chaos did create the Joker, but did it not also create Batman? Can disaster also not open the door to greatness? When we are thrust into a personal hell, there is also a chance we can come out changed for the better. You shot yourself? Yes, but it's okay. Marla, look at me. I'm really okay. Trust me, everything's gonna be fine. 
And I think this is what makes the psychological concept of lacticism appealing. But as Academy of Ideas points out, forced sacrifice more often than not leaves us in the pits of hell. But an involuntary sacrifice is, according to Jung, an unmitigated catastrophe. It is more likely to result in a psychological breakdown than a psychological rebirth. It is therefore better to take the leap ourselves. Instead of waiting for disaster to hit us, we ourselves must initiate change despite us being creatures of habit, comfort and predictability. Because when we step into chaos, into the unknown on our own terms, we are able to change our lives and ourselves more effectively. Alright, now as you can see, I was unfortunately caught in the Hong Kong protests a couple weeks back. And even though I only was just a bystander, I did have my camera with me and I took a lot of footage. Uh, so I made a community post that I wanted to make a video on the protests. Now due to the political sensitivity of the topic and radicalism on both sides, I don't feel completely comfortable making that video right now. So I still want to make it in the future and I was really excited about it, but for now, I'm uh, not gonna make it. That being said, it's sponsor time and I do want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. They were actually a great help uh, when I lost my phone in the protests because I had a lot of apps like banking apps and government taxes apps for the Netherlands that I still need to use while I'm in Hong Kong, uh, but I couldn't install them on the new phone because you have to be physically in the Netherlands to be able to go to the app store and install them. Uh, but using NordVPN, I could just access the internet through a Dutch server and still use those apps and still install them. Uh, also I just use them to go on Netflix and watch the entire library of Netflix instead of only having available the library that is available in my country. So if you want to use NordVPN as well click the link in the description below or go to nordvpn.com slash storytellers uh, and use the code storytellers to get 81% off a three-year plan uh, plus you get also four additional months for free and free access to the NordPass app. Uh, it helps the channel out tremendously, so go check it out. Uh, beside that, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.